Hey guys, this is part 5 of the platformer tutorial. So in the last video we started working on the player and he has the basic movements but no attacks so if you did try to do an attack he would start glitching out. Also if you notice if you tried to do the scratch attack only half of the sprite shows up and I figured out what was causing it but before we get started on player let's go ahead into animation uh, I put a void in front of the constructor for some reason I don't know why <laughs> wasn't paying attention anyway just get rid of that and that's the constructor there okay so back in player um, in the constructor over here public player where we load the sprites I actually messed up uh, loading the sprites, uh, the scratching attack sprites over here. If uh, over here, else, and then here, width is supposed to be times two instead of just width, so it's width times two. So that should fix the scratching. Okay, and you'll notice that he doesn't stop scratching, so that's what we're going to fix now. Um, if we go down to update, first we update the position and then we're going to check attack has stopped. We're going to do current action. If we were doing the scratch attack, then um, first we have to check if the animation has played once. And if it has played, then we're going to set this to false. Same thing with the fireball attack. If animation that has played once, then uh, firing is false. That should fix it. Alright, so. Okay. Okay, so that's good. Um, what else? Now uh, we've pretty much finished the scratching attack, so let's go ahead and try to do the fireball attack all the way back at the top. Here I um, commented out this array list of fireballs. I'm going to remove that now. Now we are going to create the fireball class. So back up here in entity, we're going to create that fireball. There we go. Um, yeah, so no more error. Okay, so again, like everything else, extends uh, map object since map object is the uh, base class for all game objects. Fireball is no different so let's go ahead and start with the constructor. Um, again you need the tile map all map objects need this and I'm going to give it one more thing a boolean called right to tell us which direction the fireball is going. You can only shoot it left or right um, you can have it going other directions if you want, uh, but uh, for this game it's just horizontally. So, first thing, super TM, um, and we're going to set the move speed to 3.8 is a good speed, and now we're going to set the DX, if right, if right is true. That means it's going right, so I'm going to set the DX to move speed. Otherwise, um, I'm going to set it to negative move speed. It's going the other direction. Width is 30, height is 30. Again, these are for the drawing and the importing the tile map. The real width and height is 14 by 14. So now that that's done, we can actually try to load these sprites in. Let me just move this down a little bit. Okay. So again, we have to put all this in a try catch block. Exception E, print stack trace in case something goes wrong. All right. So actually, let's go back up here and create some um, fields. Private boolean uh, hit. This means that the f uh, fireball has hit something and remove whether or not we should remove the fireball from the game. 
So we have two sets of buffered image arrays here. One is the regular sprites, and the other one is the um, hit sprites. The animation that plays when it hits something. So we got some errors here. Let's fix that. Import java.out.image.bufferedImage image, and also import tilemap. File map. Okay, so that's that. Let's go ahead and try to load these sprites up. Uh, first, we're going to need to read in the entire sprite sheet. It's down here. Ooh, it's uh, mm, interesting. Anyway, that's the fireball sprite there. So buffered image, buffered image. Uh, sprite sheet equal to image.io dot read and um, something. Let's go ahead and import that as well. Import Java X dot image.io dot image.io and we're going to read in this fireball GIF here. Uh, and again, like everything else that we load, we use get class dot get resources stream and it's in slash uh, sprites slash player slash fireball.gif get rid of that okay so that's the sprite sheet now we have to get the individual frames and put them in these two arrays here so the first one the regular sprites is um, size of four because there's four frames in here. One, two, three, four. Well, you can't see it on the, off the screen, but there's four of them. So we're going to use a for loop to go through those and read them in to the array. Sprites.length, i++. And this is just, uh, again, we're going to use a get sub image. Sprite sheet that get sub image. And we're going to give it the top row uh, going across, so that's i times width, zero width and height. So that's the sprites. Now we're going to get the hit sprites. These are, uh, there's three frames in here, so three. And it's pretty much the same thing here. i equals zero, i is less than hit sprites dot length, i plus plus. And hit sprites, i is equal to sprite sheet that gets sub image. Um, this time it's on the second row. It's still i times width, but this is going to be height now. Width and height. So that's that. Hopefully that's correct. So let's go ahead and set the animation stuff. Animation is equal to new animation. And we're going to set it to the uh, regular sprites and the delays is 70. So that's that for the constructor. Let's go ahead and do some of the other ones. Public void set hit. And this one is um this is the function that gets called uh to figure out whether or not the fireball has hit something. If dying or it's not dying. What did I do here, hit, hit, right, I called it hit. So um, hit is equal to true, and we're going to set the animation to the hit sprites. And the delay again, uh, 70. And we're going to make this thing stop moving, so dx is equal to zero. Actually, we have to check here if hit is equal to if it's already hit, then we should just return. We don't want to keep resetting the frames and the delay over and over again. It makes no sense. And we need one more public boolean should remove, and this is just return remove whether or not we should take it out of the game. So, public void update and public void draw two important functions here and we're going to import this 
import java dot dot everything. Okay, so back in updates, this is pretty simple, I guess. Uh, super dot. Well, I don't need super actually. It's part of the map object base class, so we're just gonna do the same thing here as with player. We're gonna check the tile map collision. And then we're going to set the position to x temp and y temp. And um, what else? Now we have to actually check to see if um, the well, we have to update the animation. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, what else? We need to check if we need to take it out of the game. If hit and uh, animation that has played once, then we're going to set the remove to true, and that means we should take it out of the game. Hmm. So that's that. So we can draw here. Super. I don't have anything for there. Um, set map position. I mean, just like with player, all the way down in player dot draw. First thing we did was set map position. That's important. So we're gonna do that there. And um, it's pretty much the same exact thing as here. I'm gonna copy and paste this. Mm, I'm actually thinking of moving this into the map object super class just to have everything in one place. I'm gonna copy and paste that in here. Hmm. I'm wondering if I should just move it in to the map object class instead. Well, I'm gonna leave it there for now. So that's pretty much it for Fireball. If we go back to player, um, doesn't actually throw any fireballs out because we didn't do anything. We didn't create any fireballs in the game. So again, once we go back to player, we did have an array list of fireballs over here. So now we're actually going to do some stuff with it. Um, over here, back in updates, let's go all the way down to update. Check attack test up. Um, what else? Fireball. Attack. Now we're going to be creating some fireballs here. So, first of all, fire plus equals one. We want to continuously regenerate the fire energy here. And um, and cap it at max fire. If fire is greater than max fire, then fire equals max fire. So that should cap it. Uh, we also need um, to check if we're firing, and the animation is not set yet. Um, so if firing and current action does not equal fireball then um, we have to check if fire is greater than fire cost if we have to uh, if we actually have enough energy to perform the fireball attack then we're allowed to uh, attack so first off get rid of the fire cost and we're going to create a new fireball here give it the tile map and facing right. Whichever direction the player is facing, that's the same direction that the fireball is going to shoot. So fb.setPosition, we're going to set it to the same position as the player, x and y, and we're going to add it to our array list. Add fb. So let's take a look at what this does. Oh, there's an error. Problem with fireballs.add. Hmm. Oh, right. I didn't actually initialize the fireball array list. So let's go all the way back up to the top here in the constructor. Oh, right. I did. I, I commented this out. So uncomment this to create the new array list of fireballs. And back down here, hopefully, it should spit some fireballs out. Guess not. Still not spitting any fireballs out. That's weird. Hmm. It looks like it should. What's the problem here? 
Uh, first off, let me just check if this is actually going in. Oh, it probably is spitting out fireballs. I'm just not drawing them. Right. So, um, if we go down to uh, draw, I should be drawing the fireballs as well. So, I guess I can draw the fireballs up here. Or int i equals zero, i is less than fireballs at size, i plus plus, and we're going to draw them. Fireballs that get i dot draw g. Fireballs. There we go. Let's see if that works. All right, there's the fireballs, but they're not getting updated because <laughs> I didn't update them up here. So let's go back up to the update function. So we have the fireball attack here, and now we have to actually update these things. So if, uh, no, we have to loop through the, all the fireballs. Uh, I'll just call this update fireballs. Or int i is equal to zero, i is less than fireballs dot size, i plus plus, and fireballs that get i dot update. There we go. That should work. There we go. Oh, they're stuck on the walls and stuff. It's because we didn't uh, set the hit sprites and remove it from the game. So we're going to do that here when we're updating fireballs. If fireballs that get i dot should remove, then we're going to remove it. Fireballs dot remove i, and then i minus minus. So that's that. Um, let's see. That that shouldn't do anything yet because um, it's technically not we are not removing anything. Um, so we have to set dying somewhere, or set hit. I mean, we have to call this somewhere. Set hit in order to make sure that hit gets true, and then um, once the animation is played once, then we should remove it. So over here in player, um, let's see, fireball. So um, we can actually set go back to fireball here and um, have one more thing in the update function. If uh, we check that dx is zero and uh, it's not dying, then we have to set dying to true. Set. I keep using dying, it's hit. If not hit, then set hit. Um, the, the way that this works is um, if you check, remember the uh, tile map or the map object, whenever it hits a tile going left or right, then dx gets set to zero. So here I check if dx is zero and it's not hit, then I set it. So that should work here. There we go. So once the fireballs hit the wall, dx gets uh, dx becomes zero, and it's not hit. So I set hit here. It does the hit animation, and then once it's played once, I remove it. So that's pretty much that. Cool. Um. Yeah, I think I'm gonna stop the video here, and uh, in the next video I'm going to add enemies and be able to attack those enemies. So yeah, thanks for watching.